Now let's do a test of the LCD versus the plasma, the 32 inch Panasonic, put the model number. Mr. Sharp now playing the role and failing to disclose his role in helping the former Prime Minister secure an £800,000 loan. After an investigation, Adam Heppenstall placed the... Channel over. Say. ...means he's gone. It's become a journey of the abandoned. One more spell. ...the toll of this conflict. Tom Bateman, BBC News, that's one. In southern Egypt. Well, let's get more now on tonight's UK oh, government. Cool. Join our political correspondent Ian Watson, who's in Westminster for us. Um, Ian, the situation in Sudan remains highly volatile. Why this deadline from the government of 6 pm tomorrow? Well, what the not by child. Oh, it looks really dark. Is that in effect there's been a dramatic decline in demand for that reason? Last sure, night, the last night, but if you want to get out of Sudan, they're saying you must oh, arrive at yeah, the airport by midday Sudanese time tomorrow. That's 11 o'clock in the UK. So, this really does feel like the final call. And there's been a political row over who should be eligible for these flights. But they were saying that all UK residents, not just citizens and their dependents, should be allowed to board. Now, once those flights have gone, officials will still be on hand in Port Sudan on the Red Sea to advise people on how to get out of the country. There are commercial ferries, for example, to Saudi Arabia. I'm told a flight did take that off one Sudan looks a little bit hard. Today, but this is a one -off. And that one's not even HD. It's just on the normal preview. That one is HD on Sky. Today, Richard Sharp resigned over not disclosing his involvement in the facilitation of a loan guarantee for the former Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Mr. Sharp is to stand down. I have to tell you before, but I'm going to keep this one for now because I use it as a monitor as well. To remain in the job. In, the, in a moment, we'll look in detail at what happened. But first, our culture and media editor, Katie Russell, has been following today's events. Clock a computer into that the BBC one. BBC is a big part of cultural life, constantly scrutinised and held to account by the public who pay for it. At the top of the organisation is the board, responsible for upholding BBC independence. But when Gary Lineker was taken off air for criticising government policy, some accused the BBC of hypocrisy. Because here was a BBC Turn chairman, up. once the Conservative donor, who oh, had out. his own crisis over his appointment. Richard Sharp was missing in action until today's critical report into his selection process. This morning, he resigned. I have decided that it is right to prioritise the interests of the BBC. I feel that this matter may well be a distraction from the corporation's good work were I to remain in post until the end of my term. So why the pressure to go? Today's report is Richard Sharp a lot better on this one. For the role of BBC chairman by failing Much to better face. perceived conflict of interest. The report's author, Adam Heppenstall KC, says Mr Sharp informed the former Prime Minister, that's Boris Johnson, that he wished to apply to be chair of the BBC board before he had made his application. And on a separate occasion, that he could make an introduction to someone who might assist the former Prime Minister with his personal finances. In my subsequent interview with the appointments panel, I wish, with the benefit of hindsight, this potential perceived conflict of interest was something I considered to mention. I would love, like once again to apologise for that oversight, inadvertent though it was, and for the distraction these events have caused the BBC. What's at stake here? Was the BBC chairman able to be truly independent of the government? Or, as this report says... Is there any the difference between 4K30 and 4K60? Oh, no idea. ...to be true for there to be a potential perceived conflict of interest. The role is a political appointment. Richard Sharp was backed by Boris Johnson. He was also once the current Prime Minister's boss when they worked together in banking. Rishi Sunak gave this reaction. 
when concerns are raised, it's right that there is a proper process, an independent process, that we don't prejudge. We allow it to carry on, establish a fact of what happened, reach a conclusion. That's happened. Richard Sharp has resigned. He could have been sacked. He should have been sacked weeks ago. It was clear for everyone to see that he had uh, failed to act appropriately in the process, and it has caused untold damage to the reputation and the independence of the BBC. The Heavensall report also focuses on the selection process and quite how much politicians Interesting test. Here's the former controller of BBC editorial policy. We know now that when the panel interviewed all of the candidates, they were told that Boris Johnson like the best favoured only one of those candidates, and that was Richard Sharp. That's the way this so so-called independent process of public appointment actually functions and it's rotten to the core. Richard Eyre believes politicians, whatever the party, should not be involved in appointing the BBC chairman. Gary Lineker agrees and unsurprisingly tweeted, the BBC chairman should not be selected by the government of the day, not now, not ever. The BBC survives through public trust, any threat to that is damaging. Mr Sharp has acknowledged that by stepping aside, praising the corporation as an unmatched creative force. He will remain in his post no, until quite different in that picture. So, why is the BBC chairman appointed by the Prime Minister and what is the chairman's role? Oh, the phone, phone screen, I see better colour on this one. Sharp's resignation raises questions for the BBC, for the government, and about how power works in Britain. The job at the centre of the story is the chair. More detail in the man than on that one. delivers its commitments to the country. And the chair is tasked with upholding and protecting the independence of the BBC. And appointing a BBC chair isn't the BBC can see that with my it's a eye. government decision. Ultimately, a prime minister's decision. And in 2021, it was Boris Johnson who appointed Richard Sharp. But now Mr Sharp has resigned after breaching the rules of the appointment process. First of all, he failed to declare that he had told Boris Johnson he wanted the job before he'd applied for it. And the next issue concerns Mr Johnson too. Let's bring in the Canadian millionaire Sam Blyde. He wanted to offer the then Prime Minister financial help with a loan guarantee. And he asked his friend Richard Sharp if he could make a connection. To do that, Richard Sharp spoke to the Cabinet Secretary and Head of the Civil I'll Service, Simon Pegg. Sound Richard difference. Sharp that was sufficient disclosure. Today's report found that it wasn't. And Richard Sharp says he now regrets for the BBC, because while the BBC didn't appoint Richard Sharp, its Director General Tim Daly has been vocal on partiality. This story risks undermining that message. And in the end, it's worth emphasising that all of this has happened because of a failure to mention one conversation. Not because the BBC acquaintance of the Prime Minister who appointed it, not because the BBC chair was a donor to the ruling party, not because each BBC chair is chosen by the government of the day. For better or for worse, this is all within the system. But there are renewed questions about whether it should be. Ros Atkins there. All four teaching unions in...